I want y'all to think of a time when you were surrounded around the right people and how there was peace. Can y'all think back at a time when there was peace? Anybody? How many of you can think back at a time when there was peace, but you don't feel it right now? Lift your hand. Come on, what happens at Limitless Days here? So, so you're raising your hand saying that I remember a season in my life where I felt peace, but I don't feel it so much so right now. Anybody? Well, we're going to break that off of you. Because the only reason that you do not feel like you're in peace like you used to be is because you got in your mind. Your mind has the ability to cause you to feel like you're in a season being overlooked and stuck. When God was using every season of that life, of your life, to set you up for where you're headed. Sometimes God wrecks your plans because he sees your plans are what? About to wreck you. Sometimes God breaks your spirit to save your soul. Anybody like those seasons? I don't either. This week I had the opportunity of sitting at the feet of greatness. And ever so often I have to stop and remember, my, remember the seasons just 10 years ago when I felt like I was overlooked. We talked about it last week. What did we talk about last week? What did we talk about last week? Y'all got your notes? What did y'all talk about last week? What did we talk about? Talked about how David actually looked like he was overlooked by his father and his family, but in reality, could it have been a culture where if he would have become king whenever he wanted to be or whenever we thought he should be, then he wouldn't be where he was headed to be? Because sometimes we'll settle in a pit when God's called us to a palace. And if we're not careful, we will get stuck on the front porch thinking it's our palace because we've been in the basement. So we get stuck on the front porch rocking in our chair because it's better than what we had. And a lot of times the reason we can't have peace on the front porch is because God's saying, I can't let you settle because where I'm taking you. Now, I do not believe that we go from crisis to crisis to crisis. Like, I do not believe that it is God's will for us to feel like we're always in some type of spiritual warfare. Really, in reality, if you're always in spiritual warfare, it's your own mistakes. A lot of times we get ahead of God and then we blame God and call it spiritual warfare. But it ain't spiritual warfare, it's your choices. But the good thing about God is he has a way of taking your choices and turning them into a message. Because he already knew you were going to do those choices and he already knew that you were going to get mad and bitter. He knew that you were going to be like, oh my God, I'm stuck here for the rest of my life with this fool I married. He already knew you were going to have those ideas. But he also knew that he created in you a clean heart. Re I say this all the time, Lord, create in me a clean heart. I have to say that verse all the time, y'all. Because I am from the south side of heaven. I will be praying hell's bells. Y'all just better be glad I ain't Jesus. You hear me? I, I, am, I am definitely hood and holy. Ratchet and righteous. And I have to lay hands on myself at least one time a day and say, Lord, create in me <laughs> a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit down in my shanana. Come on. I need you to shift some things because right now I know that I'm about to go to another level. And when I go to another level, I get distracted by things, people, places, and things that I didn't close the door on better than I left a crack. How many of y'all left a crack? Sometimes we got to go back and close the door, throw away the key, and stop giving CPR to dead situations. And telling God to bless our mistakes. No, he's saying stop being loyal to mistakes. Get your tail up. Stop saying, this is me. Take it or leave it. We all leaving it. Stop letting what they did to you get in you. Stop being mad at God because everybody seems like they're passing you up. When God's giving you an anointing that would normally take people 20 years, he's going to take a year on you. I want to go today. I'm going to call this Dreamers and Distractors. And this weekend, I heard this in the spirit. Your name is in the wind. Limitless, your name is in the wind. Joseph waited 13 years. Abraham waited 25 years. Moses waited 40 years. 
Jesus waited 30 years. If God makes you wait, you're in good company. How many of y'all are mad because God's making you wait on something you want so bad that you've settled three or four times and mad at him because of the delay? Right? I love Psalms 20, uh, 37, 23, and 24 says, The steps of a what? Of a stubborn man. We all stubborn to some, some extent, right? We all want it now. We got any brats up in here? You getting a little bratty? Come on, is that little, some of y'all like this, and you're hitting your neighbor. Like, I know you already know it, so I'm just going to go ahead and admit it. We don't get our way, right? It says the steps of a, but it's okay. You can get it together today in the next 10 minutes, and God shift that thing. God is a God of shifting. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with what? Huh? With his right hand, with his mighty hand, with his anointed hand. He said, I got you. I just need you to trust me. That's the most beautiful thing about God is the delays that looks like delays in our lives. Once we allow ourselves, I was talking to my son earlier in the back, and he was talking about I'm in a season where I'm still trying to find my way. I'm, 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 I, I, I question myself because I used to want to play guitar, and I feel like I wasted so much of my life thinking I was going to do this for a living, and now I don't even want to look at a guitar. And I feel like I wasted it. I said, you just might be in a season of preparation for where God's taken you. But you never wasted nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, you never wasted nothing. Because my Bible says, Romans 8, 28, he's working all things together for my God. I didn't waste nothing. You didn't waste those 18 years believing in somebody that never straightened up. You didn't waste your life going to college and you ain't even using your degree. You didn't waste that. It was all for such a time as this. That's why God didn't let you do some things quicker because your character couldn't keep up with the purpose that he had on your life. You got mad and quit, and he's saying, you done? Here's my scripture. Genesis 37 and 5. I'm going to read just one, media team. Genesis 37 and 5. I feel this is the word, not all of the ones I had. One night... Joseph had a dream. It's in my notes, y'all. It's just number five. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, <laughs> they hated him more than ever. How many of y'all have told your dreams to the wrong people? How many of you have put a selfie up in a season? How many of y'all were telling your haters that you thought was your family and friends and they were only in the room to get you off base using what you told them against you? Some things you can't put up on social media. You need to hush. Because the enemy is going to wear you out with no support. They support everybody else, but they ain't support me. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. Those who dream, and then there's those who attempt to destroy the dream. How many of you have a dream in your family that nobody else has ever had, and people laughing at you for it? Lift up your hands. I want to see it. They're like, you ain't never going to be that. You can't never do that. But they didn't put the dream inside of you. When God called you, he didn't call a conference call. He called you. Why? Because he knew you might be stubborn and take a while, but you're going to get it together. We talked last week about David and how he was overlooked and he was in the pasture. And whenever you're out doing the will of God, even in the little, and you're giving it your all, God will send for you on the right moment. Those who dream and those who attempt to dream. And as we see in this text today where Joseph was feeling very excited. There ain't nothing like having a dream and being like, oh, y'all need to hear about this. 
but I hardly ever meet people. I've had to learn this the hard way where you got to share your premature dreams with people that ain't even near even qualified to do what God's called you to do. They, they went to college and got more degrees. They have earned their diploma. They have learned their doctor. They have earned their pastor. They have earned all the titles that they need, but they mad at you because your oil overrides their title. And see, what ends up happening is they get jealous of you because you let people in your life that would prophesy. Oh, you got prophesied over. They celebrate you as long as you ain't walking in it. And the minute you begin to walk in it, they try to water it down and hate on you. They mad because it took a joint effort to try to take you down, and it didn't take you down. It elevated you. Why? Because you have a call of God on your life. That nobody in your family or friend circle will ever understand. Don't you understand that? It's called greatness. A dream will make you bold. A dream will make you stay up at night when everybody's asleep. Writing in your journal, making a plan. Habakkuk 1 said, write the vision, make it plain. Why? Because when they are sucking the life out of your dream, you got to go back to that place and time when God woke you up in the middle of the night and said, I need you to help me help you. I need you to get your tail right. I need you to forgive this person and this person and this person. You're like, oh, no, I ain't forgiving nobody. Let them die. <laughs> what are you doing, Kim? Praying for them. You said pray. But I didn't pray for you to kill him. We got to do a heart check in this next season because I know that the call of God on my life is on your life too. Because what you center yourself under will drip down to you. If you sit in a church and you ain't growing at a fast pace and you ain't seeing yourself hold yourself accountable... You got a whole bunch of people that are just telling you, girl, do it. Yeah, girl, girl, go tell them. Tell them off. Yeah, girl, just, oh, oh. And you ain't growing and you're going backwards. You're in the wrong circle. Because you're telling your dreams to people that the enemy has sent to destroy. That's why some of you can't keep a marriage. I had to realize I was talking to the wrong people. You can't tell your mama what your husband did. Because you're going to forgive your husband and your mama ain't. You hear me? You got to be on guard of who, what, and where you open your mouth because you wouldn't be sitting in this room if you weren't called higher. They ain't going to understand it because God didn't call a conference call. That's why you tried to put your tail in some rooms with some circles and they still didn't receive you because they would have never received you because they jealous of what's on you. You were trying to take people with you that didn't even want you there. You're like, well, that's my mama. Well, you got to love your mama. You got to honor your mama. But you already know your mama ain't got no clue where you're going. So how's your mama going to give wings to your dreams when your mama ain't never even walked in the anointing that you're walking in? Your mama can't validate you. She can love you, but she can't validate you. She ain't got the call on your life. She ain't got the oil on your life. She birthed, she birthed the visionary. She birthed the destiny giver. She birthed the world changer. But it ain't in her. It's in you. Why? Because you are the legacy carrier for your family. Praise PK. Here's what I heard this morning before I got up here. You are the palace. What does that mean? In this text, if you read and read and read, you start seeing that Joseph was brought into this family and he was from a different mama. His daddy loved him more than his other brothers. Now... Some of y'all got a favorite child, but you don't say it. But we see it. Yeah, this is my daughter, but this is my boy. It's usually the one that's more like you that you love the most. Why? Because you're like, look, I didn't do my dreams, but you're going to do yours because you got the same stuff. You got that same tenacity I got. So Jacob loved Joseph, 
and he gave Joseph a Versace coat. Y'all know them very, you, you, some of y'all sitting in this room bitter to this day. My sister got everything. I talked about it last week, how I spent so much of my life mad at my brother because I felt like my brother got everything I wanted. I felt like, Olivia, that my brother was just handed a life and here I am struggling. Though I made the wrong choices, he still should have honored me in my bad choices. Thank God he didn't. Thank God my daddy said go sit several seats down. Because I built this legacy and you ain't going to destroy it because you're crazy tail. But I go through life angry because I felt like because I was a girl and we didn't believe in preachers and women just were to have babies and cook. I just started cooking when I turned 50 and I'm, I am good. But I felt like I spent my whole life and probably, you know why I started cooking? Because I'm at a place in my life now where I am so in love with who God created me to be that I realize cooking ain't, ain't watering me down. Now I can love on people, celebrate people, bring people with me, honor people. I ain't scared of nothing. Why? Because my oil is my oil. Your oil is your oil. And I spent my life angry because of my own bad choices, Jada. And then I was mad at my parents and I was mad at all everybody going through my whole life. Angry. Jealous. And when God began to reveal our sermon from last week, he said it had nothing to do with your daddy not believing in you. It had nothing to do with Jesse not believing in David. It was the culture. Sometimes it's the way your parents was raised. That causes them not to celebrate you. And yet the enemy will cause us to get jacked up with an orphan spirit. Going through life trying to get people to celebrate us and can't even celebrate themselves. Your daddy ain't never been told he was loved. And now you are stuck because he didn't tell you he loved you. Instead of realizing that was the way they were raised. Now not condoning it because you still need to heal from it. It hurt. And the pain may not be your fault, but the healing is your responsibility. And we see Joseph in this place where his daddy gives him the Gucci coat. He's already the golden child. And his brothers were jealous. Drinking the Haterade. And one day, Joseph... Now, he's probably thinking, because you know there's manipulators. He probably had a little bit of manipulation, just a little bit, a little petty. Where he comes up to him and says, y'all, I just had a dream. <laughs> y'all going to bow down to me. In essence, he was probably saying, y'all don't realize who you're messing with. Thinking that he was going to reverse psychology it. Oh, I better be nice to him because he's going to be over us one day. That's how we are. We do that. That's what brokenness does. It makes us talk out of a place of hurt. Well, it backfired on him. And his brothers get together and say, oh, no, we, we about to get rid of this joker. We don't want to kill him. Now, his other brothers did, but thank God for Reuben. Because all his petty brothers were like, kill him. We're going to take him out and feed him to an animal. But Reuben was like, no, let's just put him in a pit. And Reuben's thinking, I'm going to come out and get him. I bet Reuben had a little bit more favor on him. He was still ratchet, but still had some righteous in him. He goes back to get him. They take his Versace coat, Gucci coat. They put blood on it, take it back to their father and say, he's been killed. He got killed. We just found his coat. Look at all the blood on it. Because when you have a call of God on your life, the enemy will even use your family members. They may not want you dead, but they want you gone. Because speaking out of a place of hurt and feeling like you aren't validated will make you do things to get rid of people that are validated. So that you can get some attention, not understanding that when the glory of God is on someone's life, like on your life, it doesn't matter if no hex, no witch, no, you can't stop this. You can steal the recipe all you want, you can sell me all you want, but you can't, you ain't got my recipe, you ain't got my sauce. And we see as this story is unfolding that they ended up basically selling him for little coins. Like that right there was another notch in the belt. You ain't even got no, you don't even think I'm worth more money? 
Like, it's almost like when somebody has an affair on you and you see the other one and you're like, she wasn't even cute. Like, you went for somebody older than me? She had wrinkles? She wasn't even cute. But the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. They sell him, so there has to be another notch in his belt of rejection. So when I was studying this sermon, I love this story. I preach about it a lot. My, I, my, 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 my niche is characters. I love to preach characters because it makes us identify with them. And I'm often thinking about, so at that moment when he's getting sold for nothing, what was he talking to himself in the caravan of going to where they were taking him? I thought you loved me, but now you sold me. And you didn't even love me enough to get value for me. And that's like some of you in this room today, somebody dropped you. And it wouldn't have been so bad in your head if you could rationalize it was for better. But the enemy is a destiny snatcher. If I can get you stumped in 1980 and then get you stumped again in 1990 because you ain't dealing with your issues, then take you into 2000 all the way to 2022. I got four decades of stopping you because you allowed people that were jealous of you and didn't see the God in you that were driven by the enemy to stop your destiny. And you got stuck there. Allowing a season in your life to become your identity. As we're watching this story unfold, we're seeing how every time he gets sent to another place that was not in his journal it wasn't a part of his story this wasn't in my dream or wasn't a part of my vision board in fact the way my life looks right now I'm in a prison and I know that I should be in a palace because if people really knew who I was they would really love me can anybody see me my own family couldn't see me. They sold me. Can you not see me? Can you not love me? And I can only imagine while he's sitting in this prison what he's talking to himself about because that's the thing about me. When I finally started realizing that for 36 years of my life, I was the Joseph in my family because God has a way and a knack of taking the black sheep of the family and turning them into the goat. I knew there was something in me, but I didn't really know why it was taking so long for it to come. And here I am in this, in this prison that I put myself in. A lot of y'all are in the prison, but you're saying the wrong things to yourself while you're in the prison. You're holding the keys to break out, but you won't break out because they rejected you. And what if I get out of this prison and then somebody else rejects me? So I'd rather just stay here. See, what I discovered was a jail and a prison or a, a, a prison and a palace are a lot the same. Because if you don't deal with the things going on in your life in the prison, then when you get to the palace, you sabotage the palace. Because you're taking the mentality of when you were in the jail with you to the palace. That's why your new marriage ain't working. Because you still got some stuff over here you didn't deal with. Yeah. See, the palace and the prison have doors. And if you aren't prepared for the palace and your character can't keep up with the palace, then God keeps making you go a little bit more. I love the thought that while he was in the prison, he could have shut his mouth, went in a corner, and said, I know that at 17 years old, you called me. He probably had those conversations. You know the conversations you have when everybody else is asleep and you got tears falling on your pillow. 
because you feel like you made a mistake or you feel like you put yourself in a relationship with somebody that sold you out. They told you not to do it and you did it anyway. They told you that this was going to happen and here you are walking it out and now you're having to figure things out. Did I make a mistake? No, nothing is ever a mistake. But while he was in that jail, I have to believe that he's sitting in the corner having a talk with Jesus like, you called me at 17 years old, and here I am at 17, uh, here I am at all these years later, and I'm sitting in a prison, and this wasn't a part of my cards. I thought I was going to go from the pit to the palace, and I feel like I'm stuck on the front porch. Do you hear me? Was that even you? When we start questioning God in the stance of, are you even really real? He had to believe that. He had to believe that while he was in that prison, he was asking God, are you even really real? Because I get 20 steps ahead and then I take 40 steps back. I serve you. I tithe. I give. I got a good heart. I don't clap back. I'm really a good husband. Why can't she see it? I'm really a good wife. Why don't he love me? You have to be asking, God, why did you put this dream in me and now you're not even going to make it happen? And I'm in jail? But what I love about God is he brought a baker and a butler. Because when you keep your heart right, he has a way. That's why you always got to be ready in season and out of season. Because he brought a butler and a baker, and he said, "Um, so for the next few years, I'm going to take you through some free life college. (laughs) It ain't going to feel good. It's going to feel like you're neglected. It's going to feel like you're overlooked. It's going to feel like everybody's getting ahead. It's going to feel like your haters won. And I'm going to take you through these seasons, and I'm going to give you some opportunities to grow. Growth comes through pain. And as he's sitting in that prison, the butler and the baker come and say, I have a dream. And he's, Joseph's just like, dude, I I mean, dreams are from God, right? And I'm, God's in me. I bet you I can do it. So he had an opportunity in that jail to use his gift, whereas in the world that he was in, he probably wouldn't have had that chance to practice. See, God gives you moments in your brokenness that's a practice session. He lets you practice getting up. He lets you practice praising your way out. He lets you practice having faith and putting feet to your faith. He lets you practice in the bad choices. He lets you practice in those seasons where you feel like he's forgotten you. And we see in that place where he kept getting distractions. Because he told the butler and the baker, all I need from you is I need you to go tell somebody, I'm in here and get me out. He had to believe that God was going to come through for him because he still stepped back up to the plate. Even though he had been rejected before, he got back up again, so maybe this time God's really going to come through. They didn't remember him. Why? Because it was all a part of the plan two years later there was another dream that needed to be revealed and all of a sudden one of those guys that was supposed to get him out sooner was probably hating on him said uh oh I'm in trouble but I know somebody they always gonna come back up when they get in a pinch that's why you always gotta keep a good heart Because, honey, you out here burning bridges, and you might need that bridge because of your brokenness. He said, there's somebody in jail that I know that can interpret this dream. And because he kept a good heart, even in the place where he felt overlooked, felt delayed, felt like he was doing the right thing and got overlooked, God said, because of your obedience, one ounce of obedience will do more for you than all the prayer in the world. Because of your obedience, I'm going to allow you to get to a new place. Now, I bet you he had a whole Holy Ghost party. Because when he told the dream, he got moved into the king's palace. But once he's in that king's palace, he always kept rising to the top. See, y'all mad at these people that keep rising to the top. The difference in them and most of you, or not most of you, some of you, 
is that you get down and get discouraged, they get back up again in the face of adversity. He finds himself back in a place of leadership. He always found himself rising. And he gets into leadership, and he's remember, he's all that in a bag of chips. He's just got favor. The glory's on his life. And Potiphar's wife's like, Woo, bow, chicka, wow, wow. I get whatever I want, she's saying. She walks up in this place and tells him, you're going to sleep with me. He's like, oh, no, you don't know who you're talking to. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of, I, I ain't going to let God down, and I sure ain't let my boss down. I ain't going back to jail. His character in the dark. See, this is where you mess up. Because you let what they're doing to you get in you. You're letting what they did, what they said, every day talking to them on the phone, trying to sell them on your dream. Now it's in you because they ain't never going to see it. Because they ain't supposed to get it. Why? Because they're drilling holes and rowing a boat. That's why you're tired. Everybody ain't your assignment. People are like clothes. You outgrow them. And when you outgrow them, they become sandpaper. Well, we've been friends since kindergarten. That's the problem. You are not who you were in kindergarten. Y'all still talking every day at 7 a.m. in the morning. Because it's what you do. Why? Because the enemy wants to keep you distracted from your destiny. He says, you can take my coat, but you ain't taking my anointing. Doing the right thing, he still gets thrown back in jail. I don't know about you, but I might have quit then. See, that's some of y'all. One divorce was hard. Two divorces killed me. Three divorces wrecked me. And now you're stuck in a season. And letting that season become your personality. We see in this story that all the dreamers and distractors that came into Joseph's life were meant to take him out because where he was headed. He couldn't do a selfie while he was in jail because you don't have phones. That's why he had to lose everything. Because you were an early announcer. And God is like, I'm going to have to shut you down so I can pull you up. Because the people you're needing validation from, they can't validate you because they had to go to college and get all the degrees. Your oil is just on you. It wasn't because you were all they said you are. It's that they couldn't understand. They couldn't even comprehend you. You thought it was because you were overlooked, and the whole time it was because you were overqualified. And now you find yourself barely being able to get out of your bed because God didn't do something for you that you wanted Him to do. Right in the wave of discouragement. Joseph couldn't take a selfie. Some of y'all would have put a whole press release. Well, I got told, I know y'all heard the story. Potiphar's wife is saying I raped her, but I didn't rape her. In fact, I left the room and she kept my coat. Joseph never made a statement. You get so busy trying to make statements to people that don't even know your middle name. And God is saying, they will see the glory in your life when you get out of your own way. 
I want them to see that when they surrender everything over to me, that I am the God that will take you from the pit to the palace overnight. It, oh, it's going to look like it's overnight to them, but it's going to be 10 or 15 years of you on your knees praying and begging God. God, I know that what you have for my life is so much greater than what I was trying to make you do. See, Joseph had something in him that he couldn't go to college for. It's called character. He ended up being the ruler in a famine. It didn't happen when he wanted it. He went to prison twice, got sold by his brothers. Nobody celebrated him. Nobody celebrated every time he got out of jail with flowers and a party. I knew you were innocent. I knew it. He got to a place where he realized that where I'm headed, I don't need your celebration. I'm going to let the top of the mountain speak for me. My fruit will outlive your lives. My character will outlive your lives. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We see Joseph literally become everything that he dreamed of as a child. If he would have lost his dream, which he probably did. But he picked it back up. He had a bad day and decided to make it not a bad life. Today I'm going to cry and I'm going to sit in my jail cell and I'm going to be mad because I keep doing the right thing and God ain't coming through for me. I'm going to go to sleep. Tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'm going to get it back together again. He ended up, y'all, being the ruler exactly what the dream was. What is that telling us? Your dream is not a lie. God put the dream on the inside. You know why so many people don't know their purpose? Because you allowed somebody that wasn't on the conference call with God with you. And you believed them. You believed them. And now you're throwing away your life and your dreams and you're miserable. We need you to get it together so you stop being mean. When they died, you died. When the marriage ended, you ended. When they talked about you, you ended. When they canceled you on cancel culture, you ended. When they unfollowed you, you quit. When they didn't retweet you, you quit. And now the enemy's got all of these little things in your life. Drinking, alcohol, drugs, pot, crack, ecstasy. Trying to numb your pain. And you keep making wrong decision after wrong decision because somewhere along the way, you lost your destiny. 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012 were some of the hardest years of my life because I couldn't get a break. Because God didn't move on my timetable. So I would get in my own way and sabotage that season. Depression would take over my life. And I would go right back to the thing God delivered me from. Joseph ended up in the right place. Because he didn't quit. In a famine. Where he could have gotten his brothers back. Here's what I hear the Lord saying. God's going to open that door when you don't want to get them back. Because when God takes you to another level, you're going to have that place where you can shove it in their face. You can post about it. You can talk about it. Poop showed you. I'm on billboards. And God is saying, what is your motive? If you care more about your food pictures on Instagram than your soul, 
what's your motive and why? Because God can't open the windows of heaven over your life as long as you're still that little girl that got stuck at seven or that little boy that got stuck when your daddy walked out. When God, all things are possible. Stand up on your feet. Joseph saw his brothers walking towards him. They were in a famine. His brothers had no clue who he was, but he knew who they were. And he comes up and tells his brothers who he is. Scripture says they bowed, probably in fear, because now you have the right to send us to be executed. They probably would have done it. But the reason Joseph was chosen is because he had character to take him to that next level. And I'm talking to some people in this room today that you have been holding something against somebody for a long time because they didn't celebrate you. They stole from you. They talked down on you. They still haven't given you your flowers. They never. They stole your dream. Talked about you. They lied on you. And God is saying, I'm raising some Josephs up in this room. Some some Josephettas up in this room today that if you will make a commitment today that I'm not going back. I'm not walking out of this church needing to put a selfie up and lie. Acting like I'm somewhere that I'm not. God created me a clean heart. Fix my attitude. Fix my heart. So I stopped bleeding on people that didn't cut me. And I realized that God knew I was going to walk through this. And he knew that I was going to have some oil on my life that I wouldn't have had if I wouldn't have made it through. They sold you. They beat you. They lied on you. They cheated on you. And they left you. They dropped you. But it was all for such a time as this. He fed his brothers. Can you feed your enemies? I want them to eat, but not at my table. I know I used to say it too. But I pray God create a clean heart in me. Oh, clean me, clean. Because I want to be your hands and feet. We're always going to have haters. Haters are are God's gift to us. Because they're motivators. Haters reveal stuff in you that needs to be fixed. Triggers are your responsibility. Triggers show you not to go reach for drugs to numb your pain, but to stand flat-footed and say, I'm going to beat this. If you're in this room and you're like, Kim, I hear you. Basically, what you're saying to me is, I'm the Joseph. Yes. God is repackaging you to take you to a place you are not qualified for in your own eyes. But you are. You're not just qualified, you are chosen. And it might have been hard. But you don't need no selfie for this. This is a commitment that you're going to make with God and say, God, I'm walking this thing out. And in the next three months, I'm going to walk into 2023 somebody that you created me to be. I'm not going to carry no baggage into 2023. I'm not going to keep beating uh, beating the door down in dead-end relationships. I'm not going to spend money I ain't got to get validation. I'm not going to walk around miserable every day needing something to get me up and something to take me down. Y'all, when I finally realized that I was the Joseph, I didn't preach my first sermon until I was 40. I lost everything at 36. I just turned 50. And I realized my life is just beginning. 
Why? Because my name is in the wind. When you start realizing that your name is in the wind, you might have gave up on yourself, but God is writing you back on. It doesn't matter if they don't celebrate you. Go to Publix and buy yourself a cake. Throw yourself a party. Get yourself some french fries. Put you some cheese on them. You hear me? Stop waiting for people that ain't got the destiny on their lives that you have and the oil to understand. They mad because you were birthed with it. They got to go to college for it. You're just birthed with it. And when you start realizing that, you'll start walking with a new, a new step and a little pep in your step. You'll wake up in the morning and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. If you're in this room and you're like, Kim, I hear you, but I still feel like I need a little push. Lift up your hand. Come on, lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. If you say, I still need a push. Here's my question. Keep your hand up. You only need to push because you're letting voices talk you out of your breakthrough. And your voice that I'm talking about is your own voice. You listen to me, y'all. Now is a time when you've got to get your scriptures on audio. You've got to get you a voice. I sat with Cheryl Brady, Pastor Cheryl Brady this past week. And in that room, she told me, she said, Kimberly, you got to watch who you hear. Because who you hear is who you become. You got to watch who you're sitting under. You got to watch who you're letting lay hands on you. You got to watch who you're gravitating to. You got to make sure that that thing inside of you that's broken ain't gravitating to something that looks like what broke you. You can't stop your destiny, but you can delay it. But my God is the kind of God that will take the time you have left and blow your mind. Everybody in this room, even the ones that just lifted their hands, I want you to lift up your hands in this room. Say, Father, I'm getting out of my own way. I'm not mad at you no more. I see little glimpses of your breakthrough. And I'm about to magnify those. And stop magnifying my problems. This week, I give you permission to reveal the hidden places in my heart that need to be fixed. I will release as you reveal. I will release as you reveal. I will release as you reveal. I won't try to give CPR to dead situations. I know you've called me. I know you've chosen me. So everything that's been holding me hostage, I break it off of me right now. Come on. I break off the word curses. I break off the negative uh, 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 words that I tell myself. Guard me. Protect me. Because you are a chain breaker, not a promise breaker. Now, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I repent. And I make you my Lord and Savior. Today, devil, I'm back. Come on, Josephs. Come on, Josephs. Come on, Josephs. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm the Joseph. Nice to meet you. God's repackaged me. You've been in my dressing room this whole time. I walked in one way and I'm walking out a new way. I'm not going to let the things bother me that used to bother me. Come on, Limit, let's give God a shout. Come on, give God a shout. Give God a shout. Give God a shout. I'm a chain breaker. I'm anointed for this. I'm chosen. My kids are going to see a comeback kid in me. Come on, come on, come on. Do it for your kids. Do it for your future spouse. Do it for yourself.
Do it because you're a game changer. Do it because you're a trailblazer. Come on. Somebody's waiting on you to get into position. Somebody's waiting on your yes. Somebody's waiting on you. Somebody's waiting on you to do what God's told you to do. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. I break off sickness out of your body. I break off worry off of your body. I break off fear. You are bold. You are strong. It had to happen. It was part of your story. They did you a favor. They did you a favor. When you start seeing that rejection was a favor. Because God was setting you up for greater. Because your name is in the wind. Your name is in the wind. Your name is in the wind. But you got to get up from what's got you stuck. You got to walk out of it. God can't take that pain away. You got to get up and walk out of it. You got to stop rehearsing it. Stop having a funeral every day for the same thing that needs to be dead. Stop it. Get up. Say, I'm up. I'm up, PK. I'm up, PK.